Yo, what's going on guys? This is Burn again, and in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to access our API using our AngularJS frontend. So the first thing we need to do is create a new service that allows us to access our API. So go to our services folder, create a new file called API.js. Inside here, we're going to create a new myapp.factory. And inside factory, we're going to name our factory API. And then we're going to inject our dependencies. And one of the dependencies we need here is the resource service. So I, I believe it's this resource. There we go. And then the function that takes in our resource. And now we can uh, edit it. OK, we're going to return an object. And the object is going to be named customer. And the resource that we're getting customer from is the URL to the, so uh, it's resource, is the URL to our API on our server. So uh, API slash customer. Um, and then we're going to have a optional ID here. Now, we, that'll allow us to search by user later or to query the uh, database for users. Um, so our next parameter here is the ID that we're going to use if we do use one. And so add ID. And that's basically all we need for right now. Now let's include our services file in our index.ejs file. Um, I'll just type in here services. And then we're going to copy one of these. And instead of controllers, it's services. And it is the api.js file. And save that. So I've created a little HTML form in our uh, partials uh, folder here. And it basically mimics what our customer object looks like in our database. So it has a first name, a last name, a phone, a street, city, state, and zip. And all those are inside of a form object. It also has a button down here uh, to, uh, when clicked, to uh, add that to the database. So let's just take a quick look and see what it looks like. Um, and here it is, actually, right here. So this is what the form looks like. Now let's get to the logic. So here we are in that partials controller. Uh, it, I've named it uh, project controller and it's in our controllers folder. And we are going to inject a new dependency. Can you guess what it is? It's the API service that we created earlier. So we'll also put it inside the function as API. We're gonna add a scope.form object. It's gonna be initialized as empty. And then down here, we're going to do scope dot add to database equals function. It's going to be an empty function. And this is where we're going to post to the database. So when the user clicks on the add customer button, it's going to execute this function. We want it to do API dot customer. We're going to use the customer section that we added in our API. And then dot save, which is a post command for our resource. And then um, it's going to have a few properties here. The first is an empty object, and that's saying that we're not using an ID or anything like that. That's where we would put the ID if we were querying a specific customer. Um, the next is the data, the, the post data that we're going to put. So scope.form. And then the next is the callback. And what we'll just do here is we'll empty the form. So scope.form equals an empty object. And we'll save that. So one of the last things we need to do is include the uh, ng resource that we used in our service earlier into the dependencies in our app. So uh, down here in our app.js, uh, ng resource, we'll save that. And then in our index.ejs file, we have to include um, the library itself. So I've already downloaded it, and it's in my libs folder. So it is, the link to it is angular uh, resource. And then angular resource, if I can spell, .js, and save that. 
So I was having a whole lot of errors uh, in this next part, but I've come to the conclusion that if we go to server.js, you'll see that body parser is set to URL encoded extended true. Now this only uh, allows Node.js to read URL encoded forms. Well, we're gonna be submitting the form in JSON format, so we do not want that. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're going to do .json and then just the empty object and save that. Okay, so let's go ahead and test it. We'll do node server, start from scratch or fresh. And you'll see that in the API itself, I've asked uh, console to log the request.body, the information that the server is getting from AngularJS so we can take a look at it. So we'll go to project snippets or customer API. So I'm gonna re-record this because I originally put in actual information. Um, so we'll just uh, put some dummy information. Redwood City Road. Uh, Mountain View. I'm in Mountain View now. California. Um, and add the customer. And so now you can see that the uh, server received the form data from AngularJS, and now we can see if it's saved to the database. So let's use some Mongo commands to check out our cert Mongo uh, database. So uh, use a test will access the database that I'm using, and then db.customers.findEveryone.pretty will make it all look nice. And there you go. You can see that uh, it's saved our Angular form data into the database. Brent Arelli with her phone number and address objects. So that's it for this tutorial. We've used AngularJS to access the API that we set up in our previous tutorial, upload form data to that API, and save that form data into our Mongo database. Um, in our next tutorial, we'll talk about deleting and updating and doing all kinds of other things. I hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and post them below. If you like the video, go ahead and hit like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.